Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Daily Refinement. This is our Wednesday morning mastermind call that we do live on YouTube, but we do this 24 hours a day, seven days a week in this room. And we have different coaches that do different topics. My call is about general questions in the morning, any topic, and then also self-development, time management. That's what this morning call is about. So today I want to discuss why your sales are slow. So Everyone in the group, hopefully, if you've been listening to what we've been talking about the last two years, you know why your sales would be slow and how you can improve it. Um, I'll start, I guess. So um, I, I know why my sales are, are not necessarily slow, but could be faster. Um, product mix is really big. So as an example, um, plus size jeans for me do sell for a higher amount than skinnier jeans, right? So sizes below 12, um, above 12, I would consider starting to become plus size. Some people say 16, some people say 12, some people say 14, but I know that I kind of screwed up buying too much bigger size, um, plus size above 14, because for me, the majority of my sales are under that. So um, I might sell the plus size ones for more money, but they take longer to sell. For me, skinnier jeans sell way faster. Not for as much money, but less, uh, a faster churn. So I know that sales could be faster if I had more outerwear. Um, I'm sold out. I have no jackets, coats, anything. So that's bad because it's cold now. Um, I don't have any electronics. So during the Black Friday mayhem where I'm getting... Like I'm on a lot of different newsletters to see what kind of sales people run. And it's mostly electronics and new items. Um, so I don't, it's different. Like I don't have any of those things that would cause my sales to be really fast right now. They're just normal or a little bit below normal. Um, I think I understand titles though, pictures, item specifics. I understand how to entertain people. So getting a bigger response from my audience would just mean better product. That's most of my issues why my sales are slow or slower. Um, a lot of people are saying this time of year, it can be very slow and it can be. Also a reminder guys, no swearing today. Jen, what's up? Um, is one of the reasons, I mean, I'm thinking that one of the reasons sales are a little bit slower is because I'm selling a pre-owned product Okay. at a time when people don't want to gift a pre-owned product necessarily. I mean, I've had a couple of people that bought, I had one woman that bought 12 items for Christmas gifts and I was surprised, but you know, she picked really good ones and some of them were new with tags, but I just think that it's not the time of year necessarily for pre-owned handbags. It's just a thought, but perhaps that's why we're competing against Amazon. That's so I have a question for you guys. I think the, the big categories are what? Toys, electronics, gifts. And do people gift used toys? Not really. Winter clothes, winter clothes are huge. They gift um, used toys that are collectible. That's about it. I see. Used clothes are collectible, so check. But this, even the stores have zero jackets and sweaters. There's nothing. I literally went yeah. to four thrifts yesterday. There's nothing there that's I worth buying. Kevin says sports items have been doing good. That makes sense to me because um, right now sports is in full gear. Like most sports are on right now. Does that mean we should be buying off season, Chris? Meaning in March when spring starts here in Arizona. I should be buying all the jackets that are coming on and holding on to them until next fall. I don't think you hold on to them though. I just think you just get them and list it. Cause a lot of people said, Oh, finally, it's time for me to list my jackets. But why were the, where were they before? So my, my question is why would you not list it right now? If you have it, I don't know. I feel like that's like justifying that you didn't list a lot because you should be working through your, your death piles. Um, I guess that's true. 
book lots are very giftable, like Goosebumps. That's cool. Goosebumps are cool. I read all of those as a kid. Um, so, been, Bill, go ahead. I was just saying, I have Goosebumps graphic tees that are just flying off the shelf. I had no idea what that was. <laughs> yeah, Goosebumps are awesome. Um, Bill says that the local mall rejected his resale concept. That makes sense because if Tord is trying to sell jeans for $68 and you come in and sell them for $9, you might even make a bigger profit than they sell for $68 and you're kind of messing up their store. So it makes sense that uh, Simon, which is one of the biggest mall groups, would not allow a resale concept in because kind of messing up all the other stores. So if someone were to walk in your store, literally they would be like shell-shocked by all the other prices and at the rest of the mall. Um, so I had a question for you guys in the chat and, uh, like how much do you guys spend on gifts? Are you guys Christmas families? Um, are you spending 500 bucks Christmas, $200 for Christmas? Steven's spending 2000. And do people make a list and then you get them exactly what they want or how does it work? One thousand for Catherine. Fifteen hundred for Juanita. Fifty dollars per person. It depends. So, <clears throat> Tice is spending two hundred per kid. And uh, we have rule. We have rules in our family. Like once your nieces and nephews have graduated high school, um, and some families has graduated college, then you you don't buy them gifts anymore. They're not really kids anymore. Um, you know, when you have kids, you're evening out the number of items that you get them. And then when they're older, you're evening out the dollar amount that you're spending on each child. <laughs> so how does that work? Um, do people give you what they want? I ask for lists, but, and they, and they will give me lists and then I can pick and choose and I'll pick some things that you know, maybe aren't on their list. So they're not, they don't know everything that's coming, but I think it's way more expensive. You spend a lot more money when your kids are little, because at least in our family, we had to buy, I know a Christmas gift for the piano teacher, the, the Sunday school teacher, their regular teacher, they have gifts from mom and dad and then gifts from Santa and gifts to each other, but you're paying for them because they're only five, you know, um, it was just like a lot more money. Ryan says a thousand dollars for his girlfriend and a thousand dollars for his wife, bro. That's awesome. Um, is that, I've never heard of that. Usually people spend more money on their girlfriend than their wife. That's just typical. Um, let's see. Nisa needs a list by October 31st. Interesting. Limited to 500 pounds per child. I can't, that's a lot. I feel like um, my family is different. I don't know if it's the Asian thing. We don't really do gifts, but anytime throughout the year, if you need something, somebody will get it for you. If that's what you, um, what is it that costs $200 per kid? What kind of stuff do they want? The Oculus too. Oculus, yeah. Oh, I we guess. Four kids uh, and three of the four want an Oculus too. Yeah, gaming stuff. Sneakers. sneakers 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 on my end yeah yeah sneakers video games it's like awesome. you asked but like did they give you a list my 14 year old gives me a list and it usually has like it's basically a tier list because he he understands mm -hmm. the shoe game enough to know like if i don't get them on retail he's probably not getting them so it's like the top of the list is what he wants but he'll throw like four different shoes on there knowing he's not going to get them all but it's like a tier level. He wants these, but he's willing to have these. Does this mean that sneaker resellers are doing well now? They should be. The ones that are like, um, like somebody really wanted this pair and they've been saving all year for it and get it for them for Christmas. What about, are there rules? Like the kids get presents no matter what, or do you make them do something to get it? Like what if you get straight Fs, you still get presents on Christmas? Ty says they get presents no matter what. Okay. 
Yeah, Andrew I think the, wants a cup. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the the you're getting Cole sounds good, but I don't. <laughs> when it comes down to, it, you usually get it for him. I mean, it's just, yeah, the naughty would, list would, doesn't apply. Yeah, naughty list hasn't been you know? around for a while. What about um a car? Because uh, Andrew says his daughter wants a car, and I feel like teenagers that's what they want so do they have to work for it do you make your kid buy their own car how does that work our daughter wanted um (laughs) our daughter and son are very different our daughter is very materialistic our son isn't so he gives me a list and it's like you know socks maybe a, a helmet for a dirt bike something you know reasonable and my daughter on her list has things like astral start for her car lasik surgery for her eyes, <laughs> it's like big, expensive things. And we're like, well, you know, we could put money toward Astro Start for your car. You'd have to pay, we'd pay half, you'd have to pay the other half, but that would be your only gift. You'd get nothing else. And then she was like, oh, I'll probably just buy it myself then because <laughs> she wants the gifts. <laughs> Kim said both girls got a car. Son had to pay for his. What's up with that? Um, you gave a car to your daughter because she earned it through grades and athletics. I love it. Ty doesn't negotiate with terrorists. No obligatory gifting. What do you guys want for Christmas? Because, guys, notice how most of the things we're talking right now, people are not selling. At least not used stuff. Pixie wants an iWatch. Nothing for Alicia. Some people use the money for family trips. Disney is pretty big. A lot of people gift a Disney trip. <clears throat> Chris, what did your wife get you? Are you hard to buy for? Hmm. I like I like dinner. So she'll usually get me dinner somewhere. Um, but I have, I feel like I have everything. It's kind of when you start to make a little bit of money and you've gotten to a point where if there's something expensive, you just buy it for yourself. So there's really nothing for someone else to give you. That's true. That, that's why it's, it's we, we didn't have a house registry or baby registry, really, because I feel weird because we're doing good. So why ask other people to buy you gifts? Um, Chris, I want acts of service. That's acts of service. So how do you ask for that? And that. Obviously, that's horrible to hear as a reseller. What, that I want acts of service? Unless you want to sell a little booklet of acts of service, which I've seen, like breakfast. No, no, I want, that's what I want for a gift. I know, but how do you gift that? How do I sell that as a reseller? Oh, I don't know. I didn't realize that was the question. I'm too, was not keyed into what you're asking. That's a good question. No, acts of service are great. Experiences are great. But that's something that's dip, dip, difficult to resell. Well, you could sell. And that's a good question. You could sell like I want my kids to paint my family room. So you could like sell like a, a paint your family room kit or something like drop cloths, paint brushes, rollers, paint pans and a gift card to Lowe's or like color swatches or something. I don't know. But then, you you know, that's a possibility. You could sell that. Mm hmm. You could sell templates on Etsy if you're going to go down that route. That's true. Templates on Etsy kill it. All of those templates for greeting cards, thank you cards, wedding favors, birthday favors, baby shower stuff. A little a cake topper on top of our wedding cake was like $30, and it was just made out of wood. Somebody cut that with their cricket or something and made it and send it. Andrew wants to not be asked to buy a car. I know. I think that some kids ask for everything. And I think maybe that's okay. If they ask for everything and they also ask the next question, like, what do I have to do to get a car? <clears throat> and you can explain work or you can hold it as ransom if you want something done to the house. Um, I have, because I used to work at a Lexus dealership and a lot of um, Indian and Chinese families would offer their kids a brand new Lexus that they got into the college that they wanted to. 
And a lot of parents backed out when they were ready. When it came down to pay for the car for the kid, they would back out. So, like, at least follow through. Um, let's see. Yeah, there was there was one kid that came in, crushed like, crushed everything, got in the Stanford early, showed up like this is the car that I want, and then his dad backed out. It's crazy. The kid worked like his whole life to get this car that he really wanted. His dad could easily afford it. Uh, and he's, his dad was like, no, nah, I'm only going to get it if it's on discount. Um, <clears throat> so Stephen is saying, are a lot of people's sales up? Yeah, I think so. A lot of people in the group are recording really, really good sales. So let's talk about that for a moment. Um, what do you guys think? What is selling well for you? What are you doing well that's moving quickly? For me, the top category by far is shoes. Shoes and new with tags is selling the fastest for me. My sweaters have jumped, but for pre-owned clothing, sweaters have, it uh, took over my men's jeans category. Kim Marie's vintage clothing is up. Sports clothes are up. Sweaters and jackets are up. But overall, I mean, this week alone, I'm running 40% off everything. And my sales have not, maybe it's only on uh, day three and they haven't got the jump I'm expecting. But it seems stagnant, not, not down, but stagnant. But the sweaters have been jumping up. Ben says toys are on fire. Amy says jewelry is up. Books and collectibles are up yeah i'm finding new shoes and pallets and all of them have issues so like broken box tried on um it's very difficult if you want to sell new shoes or pallet shoes be prepared for a really low margin selling stuff that's um and it's the same with um new tag items so this is interesting. I had a comment this morning of a guy that he had one return out of 700 sales. And then he turned on free. He had no free returns. He had seller pays returns. He changed the free returns. And now his sales exploded, but so did his returns. So now, now I, I don't know what to say to that because new with tags is different. If somebody returns a new with tags item, used it's a different now you can refund them 50 percent, but it's a different situation than pre-owned where you just relist it again so i don't know how do you balance way more sales and way more returns i haven't had that experience in pre-owned but in in new i can imagine that happening i'm thinking about taking from 60 to 30 day returns just because it's mm -hmm. i think the um, I don't know if it's gift giving or just buyer's remorse or right after the January when the credit cards come. I think that's when the re returns start really hitting hard. So I have a question for you guys. This is one of the biggest travel weeks of the year, right? A lot of people are going home. A lot of people are coming back. During this week, what if resellers are also less consistent? Because like you may have to entertain guests. You may not be doing your normal thing. It seems like that would contribute it to it to it as well. Chris. Yeah. I'm not even celebrating Thanksgiving. I'm listing. Normally I do 50 a day. Today I'm doing 70, right? And then tomorrow I'm doing 70. So I can take the weekend off and go travel to Nashville to go thrifting. So I think it's all a matter of priority. You know, like Thanksgiving is great and all that, but like, Actually crushing it and killing it in my job is like super like motivating to me. So I think it all just matters what type of person you are. I think so too. That's a really interesting thing. When um, I was in the car business, I didn't get any holidays off and no weekends off. Right. So like, um, let me just think here. I basically took Tuesday and Wednesday off every single week. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, everything is cheaper because like no, nothing is really open. Um, the travel days are really easy. So like 
since I had the work on the holidays, I would basically travel the weekend or the week after or the week before. Everything is way cheaper. So I guess it depends on your priorities. Why does it have to happen on Thanksgiving? Like as an example, um, my brother um, said that he wouldn't like he would not miss his daughter's birthday for any amount of money. And I'm like, I would miss it for a really small amount of money. If like if so, like if somebody said twenty five thousand dollars, you show up and it's on the day of my daughter's birthday, I would take the twenty five thousand dollars and then celebrate with her the next day. Why does it have to be on that day? It, it's people um, our priorities are messed up. Like twenty five thousand dollars would change your life. You don't want to do that. You would you would rather celebrate on the day and miss that opportunity than the next day. Just hang out. I, I don't I don't get it, but I get it. I think in this. People will not like sacrifice any part of their family. They'll just have to do it on that day, even though it's way more expensive. Like, how come you can't be nice to your significant other every day other than Valentine's Day? It's way cheaper. Sally, what's up? The Christmas my kids remember, and remember they're old because I'm old, is the one where we didn't get any gifts. They just got an envelope on Christmas morning and it said, Here's a hundred dollars. Yeah. Let's go shopping on the day after Christmas sales. They remember having great fun looking at all the stuff that people paid twice that much for. And it's funny, but we only did that one year. But that's the year they remember is how much fun it was to go out and pick mm. their own things at half the price. I love it. That's so cool. Because then... If you were to teach your kids that, think about they would be less susceptible to marketing. Because they'd be like, this is all BS. It's $100 today. In a week, it'll be 30 hmm. The other thing that, that they remember, I mean, we did weird Christmases. Um, I didn't want to put up a tree, so I convinced them that God didn't want us to kill one of his trees just for a holiday. So I didn't have to <laughs> buy a Christmas tree because I hated cleaning up after it. But we went, we found out that uh, one of the hospitals, we had a friend who was an ER doc and she said, you know, I said, well, you know, what can I get? And she said, I'll tell you what nobody would get. When we have somebody come in off the street, we can give them a clean shirt. We can give them clean socks because people will donate you stuff. We cannot by law give them used underwear. So we get them all dressed up and send them out in their crusty underwear. So the kids and I went down to uh, JC Penney or someplace and bought bags and bags of men's tidy whities in different, different sizes. And she said that was the best Christmas because they could then walk back, get the underwear in the size they wanted. So that was the kids remember the underwear Christmas. They remember when we decided which animal to buy a third world country family. And I remember we decided on a goat and they researched why a goat, because it produced milk and it, you know, so we did unusual things like that. And that's the ones they remember, not the years when I broke the bank trying to, you know, buy happiness, buy a big gift. I was just thinking, Sally, um, if you work holidays and you have a normal job, they pay time and a half or double pay. Um, like I can't, I'm just trying to think here. If you literally took your kid, like we say, you know what? Um, our Christmas is celebrated January 25th, not December 25th. So we're going to go out and like your kids would make a killing. Ima imagine your kids like profiting from Christmas. That's like crazy. That's crazy. Imagine that. Yeah, you just do it the opposite. Also, I have really great news for everybody. If you list 30 items a day, every day is Christmas. You can buy whatever you want, anytime you want, whenever you want. Every day is Christmas. Many people that, that have high listing goals, like they don't really care about different days because they can afford anything. And if you get to the point where you can afford anything, maybe you don't want anything, as weird as that sounds. You're just like, you're just good because you, you figured it out. <clears throat> also, um, <clears throat> This earlier this week, I was um, bagging on the royal family. Now I have a deep respect for the royal family. I didn't, I didn't get how hard it is after what because people have been recommending all these shows for me to watch. 
I was looking at the schedule for some of the royal family. Like, imagine this. They, okay, because I thought it's like a, um, I didn't understand what goes into it. I looked at this royal family member schedule, 300 days a week of work and five engagements a day. And not like, not like small engagements, like going to a, there's a crazy planned engagement of some kind. 300 days of 300 days essentially of work so like that's a lot a lot goes into that that's a crazy operation <clears throat> tech doesn't tech doesn't celebrate any holidays really he works because his staff is off on holidays um also do you guys do this tradition some people, I'm from Utah, they'll invite you over to watch them open their presents. What is, that is the weirdest thing ever. And that in Utah, that's a big thing. People invite people over to let, to, so you can watch them open their presents. <clears throat> that's crazy. Yeah, Neil. Neil says they're in service of the country. Also, I didn't realize that um, the queen was in charge of the church too. Also, I realize now, I speak English and English is from England. That is crazy. Like, okay, the British really do rule the world. How many people speak English? Everyone, it's crazy. So anyway, I just thought, um, we don't speak the Queen's English, but it's just but, pretty insane. But English is actually from French and Greek. Is it? But it's, it's not called French and Greek, though. It's called English. No, we, we adapted our own we word. Adapted it. That's what I mean. So it's like, uh, that's just crazy to me. Think about this, the reach of how many people speak English. On this Chris, 75% of the world doesn't speak English. English. Wait, how many? 75% of the world does not speak oh English. Oh my god, are you serious? Yeah, if you listen to Mr. Beast, one of his major innovations mm. was that he created all these channels that speak different languages, like he has um, whatever, uh, people who translate all his videos to Spanish and everything like that. That's how he gets one of his insane reach. But yeah, 75% of the world does not, apparently. Hey, oh my goodness. Or at least maybe not English is not their, their um, first language. Spanish is not. Spanish is number one. According to Google, at all, seventy-five percent of the of the uh, the world does not speak English at all. That's crazy. I can't even take in the planet that we live on. How is there time to complain when there's so much cool stuff going on? Imagine. Yeah, I know India is huge. Like I know Mr. Beast is more popular in India than he is in the United States. And he makes his videos in English first and they get translated in the Indian. Yeah. I just thought it was cool. I, I now think that we have the most boring country in America. No traditions. The, the food is fast food. Yeah, my mind is blown. Also, there are more eBay customers outside of the U.S. than inside of the U.S., right? And that should seem obvious because of 350 million people here, but 7 billion people worldwide. Brian is saying, I know, right? I, I just, the traditions really blow my mind. I don't get it. Looking at. I don't know. I guess it's just priority. If you're trying to get ahead, then prior, then maybe traditions don't matter. If you've already made it, maybe only traditions matter. I think I think that's kind of one of the one of the defining characteristics of America is that you know going back to the Puritan work ethic that we work more probably than most other countries. Yeah, maybe that's why we don't have as strong traditions as as, as some other countries. That's interesting. Yeah. What about Japan, though? They work much harder than we do. I, I think it's about the same. The I only thing is, um, oh, I was just going to say that, like, um, if you look at American history, 
it's like and we're we're trying to succeed from um england and people came here and it was just like when you hit the the continent you're just grinding right to build a decent life for your family and build cities and towns and everything so working is just so embedded progress is so embedded in our culture here that yeah we're a new country we're starting over with tradition we're just building something and seeing how it goes it's going to take let's say a thousand years for these really like deep-seated traditions to take hold and you know be great that's true and i just realized pretty much anyone listening right now doesn't need a college degree doesn't need any formal education they can start reselling right um flip a few items over and over again till they get a little bit of money to maybe get a storage space or a store or in a car and it's crazy the opportunity that we can have this country is so rich that most of us on this call make a living from selling things people throw away yeah i still think the us has the best opportunities um shanna's asking how do you reach international based customers in the best way i think translate your items into that product it's difficult like mr beast can do it because he can just translate one of his videos re-edit it and have a voiceover but for us hard to translate something and get it because like it's the same energy to consume a video in india as it is to consume a video in the us but shipping internationally is very cost prohibitive but I know like watch me Amazon. He's a really big Amazon seller in Europe and he lives here, but all of this stuff is sourced and shipped out of Europe. It's not going from here over there. That would be too expensive. Yeah, I think it's the, um, I guess let's talk about this. Make your own traditions, right? Is it that you guys celebrate Thanksgiving after and work during the holidays to get double pay. Um, do you skip Thanksgiving and have a bigger trip on Christmas? I guess everyone needs to come up with their own, their own tradition that's worth it to them. Catherine, what's up? I was wondering if you, um, if you think that eBay, you know, uh, Poshmark now is doing live auctions. And of course, whatnot is a live auction site. Mm -hmm. And since eBay started as kind of an auction site, and they have been trying to push doing more, putting more videos on your items, do you think they'll go to a live auction format at some point? They're trying it to the point where everyone can live stream. I'm not sure. Because, okay, here's the issue that I see. The problem with live streaming is that people don't get what they want. They get what you present on eBay. You get what you want, but it's not entertaining and you can't interact with the owner. So as an example, let's say I type in toaster on eBay it will show me, right? If everyone in the world was live streaming at the same time and you could search what people are selling that day, that would work. If like, Andrew is selling a toaster at 11 o'clock today. And I know that. Okay, cool. At 11 o'clock, I'm going to try to get that toaster. So eventually, live stream will be searchable. And then that will be mind-blowing. Because you'll always get the best deal. Because somebody who's selling it right now is always going to give you a better deal than waiting for it on eBay or Poshmark. Because I know, well, like on Poshmark, people that have tried it <clears throat> have said that it they like it better than whatnot. Because you're just basically posting what you've showing what you've already posted in your closet you don't have to get items ahead of time and lay them out and and hold them up you're just showing items that are already listed and so they like it that way it's less kind of prep work yeah i think that i don't know having experienced live streaming and selling fixed price it's Every stream that I've seen on Poshmark has them hold, uh, I don't 
everyone I've seen holds their actual items up. So I guess I'm confused by that. Yeah, I've I never agree. seen anybody show a screenshot. They're all oh, holding the okay. items up on a hanger. So they still have to go get the items and hold them up. The ones that, uh, well, just last night, Relive Maui or Relive Maui or whoever she is, she was, everything's held up. Yeah. She's up so she's I, up I don't know who's doing it. Yeah. Well, okay. You guys know she's one of the 10 mastermind members from the thing I did earlier. We love Maui. She, she kills it now. Hopefully this, it was useful for her. Um, I don't understand the silent auction. What is someone, has someone watched Poshmark and seen that and can explain to me what the silent auction is? Why? What is the purpose of that? Go ahead, Andrew. No, I was just going to ask, like with the Poshmark auctions, I don't get it. Like, why wouldn't the people want to wait for all the money? Why would you say, here, I have this item that I did all the prep work for, photographed it, list, you know, described it, did all the measurements for, and then you want to start the auction at $4 when you have it listed for 30 I, I don't get that concept. Like, I understand if you were getting inventory and just auctioning it, you know, like whatnot, and just not really having a whole, you know, thing of doing the listing for it but once you've done the listing for it why not wait for all the money i agree it's weird getting rid of old inventory though that's why i would do it because i no, want to no. get rid of stuff that's not selling people are saying why do you do live auctions and start at the like the ebay price a lot of people do that oh oh i would they, do they, they don't sell anything because you don't have enough audience to do that yeah no no yeah the silent auction thing, I believe, is kind of what Catherine was referring to is they're like, here, go browse my closet. If you see something, tell me and I'll bring it out. And then they that's, just kind of sit that's there. Not and, a good, that's not a good shopping experience. No, I don't think I've seen a lot of positive uh, on that. But I have seen uh, quite a few on my Poshmark list doing these quote unquote. Silent auctions don't make sense to me. I don't know. Like. Okay, guys, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Doing a live stream auction is already really easy. How much easier can it be than you're at home holding an item up? You don't need pictures. And also, like a lot of people have been asking why um, my auctions sell for more, even if it's not me. It's because we say the item specifics out loud. So when Holly streams, I don't even, I don't have to run my stream. She could do it for me. She's already run a, run a brick and mortar store before. So I'm like, Polly, hold up the item and say the item specifics. So she's like, boom, this is a Torrid jeans, women's 10, boot cut, light wash, a little bit of stretch in the fabric. Here's the front, here's the back, here's a close up of the label, here's where it's manufactured. That's exactly the same as an eBay listing. If you do a silent auction where you don't say anything, of course it's gonna sell for a lot lower, right? If you um, hold up the item and don't say all the item specifics, of course it sells for lower. People don't know what the value is. So um, Sally says is what not searchable. It's not because people don't enter in their items. And it's like, if you enter in your items, you might as well put it on eBay or Poshmark and get all the money. The silent auction thing is so silly because it doesn't make sense to, to do it that way. Like you're already on camera. You might as well sell it for more money. You would sell it for less money if you can't convey the value to the customer. Uh, Brenda says she pays up for items so she can't afford to auction them. That makes sense. People who pay up for items can't afford to resell usually. Like I pay 10 for it, but the customer does not care what you paid for it. So like, um, I basically lose money every single show because I do at least one giveaway. So on the giveaway, I obviously paid more than free. So I lose money on that, but the idea is to bring people to buy all of your items. I wanna sell all of, maybe that's the new thing. I wanna sell all of my items. Also, um, people are saying they wanna watch a channel of just Jared, cleaning and Sally ironing. 
for ASMR. So wait, I'm, I'll do this right now so you guys can enjoy this. Let me get Sally. Maybe you guys just want to see people working. All right, go ahead, guys. Questions? You know, there is something to that about seeing people working. Like when you go on TikTok and you see people cleaning, at least for me, it makes me want to clean. It's motivating to see something get done. Yeah. So maybe we need to just keep watching people list. <laughs> and we'll want to list more. Beth, what's up? You said something yesterday, no, it was probably the day before, about the way to get things done is to not sit down. Yeah. Wise words, Chris. I've accomplished so much by not sitting down in the past two days. I came back from the dog park and I'm like, oh, I can't sit down. Let me like clean for a while. An hour and a half later, things were so much cleaner because I didn't sit down. It's so easy to stay standing up, but getting up from sitting down, mm, whole nother deal. So the very wise words, I've shared them with other people and they all agree. Very okay. wise. Words. That only applies to housework though. No, I, then I did eBay work. I mean, uh, yeah, I did eBay work too. Oh, I'm saying like, like, I came home from the you... dog park and I took pictures. I'm like, oh, I can't sit down. Let me take a bunch of pictures. Okay. So this is amazing to me. Um, I just made a video called Restart Masterclass on Sunday, released Sunday. And I went over how to do eBay and someone said, that's not how you do eBay. It is how you do eBay. You take the pictures, you walk over to your desk, you plug in the memory card, you list every single item without taking a break. That's it, right? And they're like, no, that's not, that's not how you do it. And I'm like, that's how you should do it. You, people don't do that. They, they, they come to their desk and then they get up and go do a thousand other things instead of listing. But there is nothing else more to it than plug it in your computer and sit there until all the listings are done. Um, and it's amazing. Like, I think that live streaming has taught a lot of people how lazy they are because you can't take a break. Like, okay, this is the most amazing thing ever. In, uh, they have this thing called a raid on whatnot or on Poshmark <clears throat> where you can take your following and push them into a stream. So let's say, okay, Jen wants to run a handbag show. She's never done a live before. I come on. I sell three handbags and I get 150 people watching me. Jen has three people watching her because she has no following. So then I'll say, okay, everybody, we're going to do a raid on Jen. All my 150 people show up to her stream. Those people take like nine minutes to run their first auction. I'm like, you're ruining that audience. Like you, as soon as that happens, shut up, hold up the next item and talk about it. Why would you not waste that? So many people get their shot. They get their shot. People will give them a raid and then they won't, they will sell zero items. Like, it's really, really important. Oh, so Alexis says she spends 10 hours doing one hour of work. That's exactly what most people do. 10 hours doing one hour of work. So I want to do the, um, I guess that's what it is. I, I know that that's difficult, but like teaching people how to work is huge. How to do it. Catherine, what's up? <clears throat> oh, you're good. Okay. Um, Jeannie says maybe they are nervous. They are nervous because they don't know what they, what, because imagine you've been talking to three people your entire whatnot career and all of a sudden you have 200 people. You might freak out, but I'm just saying, please sell something. I always go into those streams and say, calm down, pick up an item, start the auction. Don't freak out and then wait. And by the time they list their audience, it's back down to three people again. Okay, so this, Carrie says this happens on Twitch. Um, a streamer will get raided and then they spend a minute talking about themselves and all the people are gone. Yeah, or I mean, they're not putting on the best show to retain those customers. Sally? You were talking a couple minutes ago about, you know, people saying, no, not, that's not the way you do eBay. I was, I meant to text or DM both you and tech and say, I want my money back because I decided you know, I've been doing it my own way. And I thought, you know, I was watching small videos and I said, okay, just for fun, do it blankly blank text way. 
Right. So <laughs> I went down and I wanted to say, I want my money back. Why didn't you tell me it was that easy? I'm not kidding you. Just sometimes say, you know what? I have an addiction. I'm going to turn it over to a higher power. I'm just going to do what he says. I took pictures listed. And why have I wasted a year doing it my way? I know. Well, I mean, Tex said that paying each month for our service is punishment for not doing it our way. If you could just do, if we could just do it his way, then you don't need to pay anymore. You can just, just don't pay anymore, and you graduated. You made it. Um, Raven says that there's a seller on Poshmark with a million followers, and during her live auction, she only gets sixty watches. Here's the thing, though, with that, it's because of what she sells, and it's because of her personality. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know who you're talking about exactly. I'm just guessing, but like. I have like 900,000 followers on Poshmark too. If I went on there and I sold full price items, I would have two watches. But if I went on the Poshmark, I see it all the time. There's people on whatnot or Poshmark live with 500 people in the chat. Guess what they're selling? $1 auction Chanel. If you, if you say, um, hey guys, my name is Jen. This is my first Poshmark Live. I'm going to hang out with you guys and talk to you about this Chanel that I'm going to sell for $1 in an hour. Uh, please tell all your friends. I'm going to start it at a dollar. It's a $5,000 Chanel. I'm at Chanel right now. And here's the lady that's going to verify that it's authentic. I'm literally going to buy it from Chanel. They're going to ship it to you to prove that it's real. You would have 500 people in your chat. Brand new. Right out the gate. Or you could have a million followers sell stuff that people don't want but price is too high and have 40 people in your in your in your audience what not i mean live auctions are not broken the people who are running them are broken um yeah we can do that we can have a battle <laughs> who can list the most items in an hour i would love that battle And everybody who's participating has to at least make a comment or type something in the chat. You can't just be like listening in the background. You got to participate. Why? Well, because then it'll be a level playing field. So I intended a 24 hour call to be people working in silence. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Um, but I understand if it was just hang out and chat, it would be way bigger. But I guess you can start, you can type in, I'm starting now, go work for an hour turn the camera on, come back and say, this is what I accomplished during the hour. If you guys use the group like that, you would make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Because if, if Jen typed in, I'm starting my hour now, and she comes back an hour later and says, I photographed one item, people are going to be like, what did you do? Photographing the item only takes 35 seconds. What did you do with the other 59 minutes, Jen? And then she would have to talk about it. Um, so e Eagle Watch asked, how long did it take me to get traction on eBay? I started getting regular sales after a week. So I started listing one item a day. Cause I, and then there was only um, maybe like six or seven days that I couldn't list anything because I didn't have any money. And that, that all happened in the first three weeks. But once I had like $70, I killed it. Because like, that's enough money to do some damage. Like the third, if you have 70 bucks in your pocket, you can, you can kill it. You just gotta wait until you find something really good to sell. Tech would join the battle every day just to show you guys if we had that. Cause he's bored. So Layla has been killing it on Posh, doing selling in bundles. That makes total sense because it's one shipping cost in the five pound box. You're killing it, Layla. That's, um, did you guys see my, my, or Layla, I don't know if you were in the live when I was showing my setup. Okay, so um, how my setup looks like is, there's the stream, right? Uh, the area where I stream. And then right next to it is where I build bundles. This is what Layla is saying. She's doing great on Posh Live doing bundles it's because Posh Post is up to five pounds. So I can't sell on Poshmark Live right now because I'm contracted to whatnot. But 
after my contract's over, if I want to sell on, um, on um, Poshmark Live, it's the same setup. I would build my bundles and go and see, Lisa, this is what, this is where um, people go wrong. You're not selling bad clothes. You're selling great clothes in bundles. People are confused. They think that what not in live streaming is to sell garbage. You want to sell the best possible stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Lisa said my bad, not bad clothes. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as far as like, um, if you have really good bundles, you'll kill it. So Eagle Watch is asking whether things, okay, so I started around the house and then I got maybe $20 from stuff I sold around the house. And then I started going to the flea market and I sold an item I found in the trash for like seven bucks. I got all of my um, materials out of, out of um, the garbage can or the Dollar Tree. And then once I had $20, I had enough money to buy like two or three things at the thrift store and then started, yeah, Layla. You're putting in the work and that absolutely works because the customer only pays one shipping cost. You make more money, customer gets a better deal. Poshmark makes more money, triple win. Exactly. And you know what, Chris, I chose to, uh, to start at $15 because I know that way um, I'm only paying $20 of fees. Mm -hmm. I mean, 20% of fees instead of starting I don't know, four items at $5 and Poshmark will be taking $2.95 every mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. you know? And mind you, a lot of people, even on those streams, will buy more than one bundle because they're still saving. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, um, see, on whatnot, the cost at $15 is, is $2. So on, on Poshmark, it's $2.95. Leila? I think so. Sorry, yeah, it's $2.95. Okay. If you um if the what is it called? If a buyer buys something that costs less than $15, it's $2.95. So ten dollars will be two ninety five, five dollars two ninety five, but if you start at fifteen dollars, it is going to be twenty percent. But the only way you can have like people be interested in what you're selling and have it start at fifteen dollars is by bundling. I mean, depending on what you're selling. But um, so yeah, that's how I came up with that. Like make the bundle look really appealing, and I always make sure I have. Um, good thumbnails, I would say it in the thumbnail, uh, bundle by size, uh, bundle by whatever, or, and say the type of item I'm selling on that day, if it's pants, if it's active wear, active wear bundle by size. And then I put in my titles, for example, closet, clear out or whatever, um, resellers and non-resellers. For some reason, it seems to attract people. I put resellers and non-resellers. Because even if you're not a reseller, if you are able to get a good bundle and everything is your size, you will get it, you know? I, I, I really like that idea because with a bundle, you can also, you can find, um, excuse me, um, one, of, one person can usually identify with at least one of the items that you like, that, that you have. And also the, the best bundles, uh, here, hold on. I'm going to end the public chat on YouTube.